Well, welcome to the second part in uh, topic two for channel hydraulics. And in this part, we're going to deal with the hydraulic jump. We'll talk about specific energy and apply that to the hydraulic jump. And then we'll also talk about the momentum equation, how that's applied to the hydraulic jump. So we can also apply the specific energy curve to a hydraulic jump. So here's the same hydraulic jump that we looked at in the introduction to this module. And remember, we're going from critical flow to supercritical flow to subcritical flow. So it's a rapidly varied flow transition. And we have a lot of turbulence through this transition. So there is energy loss. There's a reduction in the specific energy. Here are our two depths. Um, at the start, before the hydraulic jump, and after the hydraulic jump, and I've just drawn these across onto the uh, specific energy curve. And so this is the specific energy at supercritical flow. This is, what, this is the, the specific energy before the hydraulic jump across here. Um, we get an energy loss through the hydraulic jump. So um, as we go to subcritical flow, we also lose energy. And this is the depth after the hydraulic jump here. So that's interesting, the specific energy apl um, curve applies to the hydraulic jump, but we can't actually use this curve alone to estimate what depth we might expect downstream of the hydraulic jump for a given um, depth upstream, because we don't know how much energy is lost in the hydraulic jump. We don't have an equation for that. As we said in the introduction slides, it's actually not the conservation of energy that allows us to um, understand um, the change in depth through a hydraulic jump. It's the, cons it's the principle of the conservation of momentum. So now we're going to go on and do a similar thing, a similar analysis with the conservation of, of momentum. Firstly, we need the momentum equation. So let's remember the situation here where we have um, a, a force applied by hydrostatic pressure at the upstream end of the hydraulic jump uh, and the critical flow condition and at the downstream end of the hydraulic jump. So we're thinking about this volume here. And the pressure, uh, force applied by pressure is much less upstream than it is downstream. And this, so there's a net force in the upstream direction, so in this direction, um, and it um, that causes de deceleration of the flow, and so we have a reduced velocity downstream and increased stage, increased water depth. We can write that math mathematically as the sum of the hydrostatic force and momentum uh, on the downstream end of the um, hydraulic jump equals the hydrostatic force plus momentum at the downstream end of the hydraulic jump, so the upstream and downstream or hydrostatic force plus momentum is a constant um, if you're looking at two um, locations upstream and downstream of a hydraulic jump. So that gives us the basis for developing the momentum equation. Now I'm not going to go through the, um, the details of the momentum equation, you can work through those yourselves, but we see here that it's a function of depth squared and the inverse of depth, which is quite similar to the situation we had with the specific energy equation. So perhaps there's a minima in this equation as well, and we can look for that by differentiating. We take the, um, uh, we differentiate the sum of hydrostatic force plus m by depth, and we get this, this equation. Um, and if we, for that to equal zero, the discharge squared has to equal g times depth cubed, and we can rearrange that to get the flow velocity at that minima equals the square root of gravity times depth. So that's absolutely identical to the velocity and depth relationship for the minima of um, the specific energy. And remember, that's the condition where flow velocity equals wave velocity. So once again, we are at critical depth, the critical flow conditions at this momentum minima. So the momentum equation actually looks almost identical to the specific energy equation with a minima at the critical flow um, and um, increases in specific um, with, with um, the sum of momentum and hydrostatic force 
whether you increase depth or decrease depth from that point. So that's interesting. So we've already done this with the specific energy equation. We're going to apply the energy curve and the momentum curve to the hydraulic jump to understand what's happening here. So we've already done this for the specific energy curve. Um, we have this loss of energy um, through the jump associated with turbulence. Um, and so we see this on the specific energy curve. Now let's do the same for the momentum um, curve. We have uh, increases in pressure, hydrostatic pressure. We have reductions in momentum. Here's the uh, momentum um, uh, and here's the momentum curve. And here are the conjugate depths um, upstream and downstream of the hydraulic jump. There's no loss in the sum of momentum and hydrostatic force. Remember, they're conserved through the hydraulic jump. Turbulence doesn't affect them. So the uh, momentum, um, so the momentum is is the, the conjugate depth is shown directly above the um, the the depth upstream of the hydraulic jump. So we should be able to use the momentum equation to relate depth upstream and downstream of the hydraulic jump. Let's do that quickly now. I'm not, again, I'm not going to go through the details. You can look at those in your texts. I just really want you to understand how we're going about how we're going about the analysis. Here we've got the hydraulic jump um, in a rectangular channel of width v, the uh, depth and velocity d1 and u1 upstream of the jump, and the depth and velocity d2 and u2 downstream of the jump. Um, the, the momentum equation states the net force acting on this volume between D2 and D1 equals the rate of change in momentum across this volume. And that could be written mathematically uh, in this way. You can work through that um, on your own. And we can rearrange that and simplify it to give the, the expression that relates the conjugate depths D2 and D1. Um, D2 is a function of D1, it's proportional where this constant of proportionality is a function of the Froude number um, at the downstream of the jump squared. It's also possible then using the energy equation to calculate the energy loss across the, the hydraulic jump and that's given by this equation here. And your texts work this through um, step by step. That's all I want to cover with hydraulic jumps. Um, you can go through the equations in your own time and I recommend you do that. But conceptually, it's the momentum equation we use to um, calculate the, the downstream depth based on if we know the upstream depth. Um, and we, um, we then use the specific energy equation to work out what the energy loss is across the hydraulic jump. Well, that's the end of part two, you'll find part three online and that deals with gradually varied flow.